What's up guys? Welcome back. On today's video, we're going to show you some of our late rut action. Actually, on the next three videos, we're going to show you some of our hunts from down here in Missouri on public land. It's been a tough season down here for us. I was just figuring it up a few minutes ago. I think I've been in the woods since bow season started around 35, 36 times. Lots and lots of deer. I've had tons of deer in bow range. Everything hasn't quite come together yet. And that's just how it is when you're bow hunting public land. At least that's the way it's been in my experience. You just keep going and going and going and trying to put yourself in good situations. But a lot of things have to go right in order for you to kill them with a bow. Towards the latter half of November, we really started getting on some deer and some big bucks. So that's what we're going to show you in these next few videos. This first one is a gun hunt with me and Nick. And then uh, we got back to bow hunting again right around that Thanksgiving time frame. And before we get to the video, I just want to thank everybody for supporting us through the Black Friday sales. Hayden and Minnie and Crystal have been working really hard to get all your orders out the door. If you haven't got it yet, I'm sure it's going to be headed your way soon because they've been working nonstop. I mean, Mindy texted me at like 1 a.m. She was up doing customer service stuff and answering y'all's questions about our merchandise. We just really appreciate your support and we're extremely grateful for every one of you that decide to make the hunting public a part of your day. And if you missed out on some of the Black Friday sales, Hayden said he's gonna have a bunch more sales going up between now and Christmas. But that's enough of me talking. Let's get to the video. Walking in this morning and we're about I don't know, a third of a mile in or so, and Nick just said, man, there's a lot of tacks in here on these trees, but there ain't where we're going. <laughs> we got a long walk through these woods this morning. Cold north wind, high today, supposed to be 42, and the temperature right now is 41. Yeah. So it's gonna be a brisk one. And I sat this same saddle four or five days ago now, and I saw four deer, but they all come right back past me. The doe and a fawn and two small bucks, and then walking out, I saw some huge rubs, a fresh scrape, and another small buck. So I know there's a big one or two back here. I just didn't see them last time I was in here, and today's the last day of the Missouri gun season. So me and Nick got the old 30-30, and we're going to get back here in this saddle and just sit for the whole morning. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a big one comes through there. There's a bunch of cedars on the point of this ridge. Real good thermal cover for these cold fronts. It's been raining for the last day. I'm assuming most of these deer have been bedded up in them cedars trying to stay dry and, and warm. That's the hope, anyway, is that there's a bunch of them. Whoa, what was that? Did you bullfrog. just... Bullfrog. No, bullfrog step on you? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. We're going to follow these thumbtacks for about another half mile, and then they're going to end. Rock and roll. And then we're going to go another half mile. Yeehaw. As soon as we started climbing the tree, I heard a deer walking in the woods over here to our left. Never could get a look at it, but it was on a mission. It was cruising or following a doe, and then just now, a minute and a half ago, we looked up on this ridge, and there was a buck cruising across the top of it. It's a little buck. When they got around here to the left of me, I could see two deer down there. I think they might have both been little bucks. But I grunted at them, and they looked over here one time. The rest of the time their nose was on the ground. So there's some rutting action going on back here this morning. Ruddiness.
haul driver that little six point win. That six point went back at bottom. I saw him drop down. Did he go back left? Shot that sucker. <laughs> That'd have been all right with me. I thought about it real hard, and then I also thought about how far back here we are. A pretty good piece back. And then I also thought about that I forgot my game bags and my sled at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, as he was coming in, I was like, man, if I shoot that thing right there, then we gotta drive all the way back home and get that stuff and come all the way back. Which we would enjoy every minute of. Yeah, it'd be all right. But they also went right. They could smell us, but they weren't too concerned. Man, I was awful tempted on that guy. I bet if he would have cut right here, you would have. Yeah, I probably would have if he'd have come right down the pipe. I could have shot him right there. I would have been shooting right past your head. That's why I leaned back. <laughs> We've seen. Four or five bucks, I think, yeah. so far. We just had that doe come in and booger us a little bit, but them things didn't really seem to care. They cruised right through the middle of the saddle. Who knows? We might have a big boy do that yet this morning. Yeah. They're getting bigger. They are. by the minute. Yeah, that was a different buck than the one that was with the does. Yeah, that was like a little five point. Yeah. They're combing this ridge thick this morning. Surely we're going to see a good one, I would think. One worth shooting, I'd hope. About that time when the big boy ought to be showing up. 10, 11 o'clock. After all that deer scent's been laid down in there by all them other young bucks and does and stuff we've seen. Now's when they come slinking through, perusing around. Action cooled off for us about two hours ago, a little over two hours ago. We saw all those deer at first light and then basically up until nine o'clock we were seeing deer. Probably saw five or six different bucks and a few does and fawns. I just about shot that one nice two-year-old buck, but didn't end up pulling the trigger on him. I figured it's the last day of gun season. If he don't get shot today, he's got a pretty good chance of living, so onward. Me and Nick are going to climb down, go get something to eat, and figure out what we're going to do next. Pretty good hunt, though. Just didn't have the right one walk in front of the 30-30 this morning. I've sat this spot now like four times over the last four or five years, and I've seen probably close to 20 bucks and 30 or 40 does between those four hunts. All of them come by within 50, 60 yards of this little saddle. Mm -hmm. I call it a saddle. It's, it's just basically this small little flat ridge with some cedars on top. And as those cedars break over here onto the bench of the hill, you get into some black oak and some pin oak, and then you get into this white oak and red oak timber that me and Nick are sitting in. So there's actually like three real subtle transitions right here. And these rubs are scattered all through these transitions as they kind of melt out of them cedars. And up in the tops of these black oaks each time I've hunted it, I've seen piles of acorns up there. I was looking at my binoculars a while ago. They look like they're mostly caps mm -hmm. that are from acorns that have already fallen. But at first light, there was a squirrel up in the top of one of those black oaks. and. He was cutting acorns. He probably cut 10 or 15 of them down right underneath us here. And after walking through just gobs of wide open, wide oak timber to get back in here, it's no surprise why the deer are here. 
This is one of the few places with any sort of habitat diversity in these big monotonous woods. And there's a decent amount of security cover back here with the cedars that makes them feel safe. It's a good spot. Just haven't killed a buck out of it yet, but I imagine we will at some point.